Tonight we begin the 22nd chapter of Genesis. This is the text where Abraham is commanded to offer up Isaac. So it's there's going to be a lot of uh, intriguing things in this text. We'll be uh, going over the entire chapter, of course, covering this much bulk. We're just hitting some of the high points, you know. It's very important to me that we don't get lost in the details, you know, that see the overall picture. Well, the text reads as follows. <clears throat> it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and he said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, Here am I. <coughs> He said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is to this day. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. It came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor, Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemuel the father of 
Aram and Jased and Hazo and Pildesh and Jidlaf and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Ruma, she bare also Teba and Gaham and Theshash, <coughs> Theshash and Maacah. <coughs> so you thought you had a big family, did you? Now we're going to see, I want to keep you in continual remembrance of this, that what we are seeing here is how faith reacts. That's what we're saying. If you miss that and think of like a hero type thing, this, you, you miss the point here. The faith that Abraham had is the faith that everyone in Christ is intended to have this, this kind of faith. You'll see the sensitivity of this man, he always responds immediately, just immediately. Whether it's a call or whether it's a command or whatever it is, he, he responds immediately. And an angel had to stop him from offering the sacrifice or he did, he did, went right through with it. At that point, God confirms a promise he's reiterated several times already, reiterates it to him. And then Abraham and them returned to Beersheba, and he dwells, that's his base of operation, Beersheba. Now I want you to note that we're now in a section of Genesis, commencing actually with the 12th chapter, when the attention has been turned to Abraham. Now if you, if you have ever bought into this, that God sees everybody alike and all this, see, then this is very hard to understand. For all the people in the world, he focuses on Abraham and it stays on there right up to John the Baptist and Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stays on there. Amen. Why? Because now God is going to get him to the subject of immediately addressing, preparing for the Messiah. Up to this time, most of the revelations of God had to do with exposing sin and exposing his intolerance of sin and so forth. And even with all of that, a lot of people still, they don't know this. But he spent several hundred years, a couple of millennium, 2,000 years. That's how long it's been since Jesus was here, just so you kind of get your bearings about how long 2,000 years is. He spent all that time showing them how serious it is to be a sinner. Mm -hmm. yeah. Particularly when you're thinking of facing God. <laughs> it's a serious business. Because God will not tolerate sinners. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's going to work on this plan. Because there has to be an adequate preparation for the Messiah to enter the world. Because he's coming in without any advantage. He's not going to be able to think not going to be able to talk, not going to be able to comment, not going to be able to run or walk. He's going to be, for all practical purposes, totally helpless. Now we got to prepare the environment for, for this. And there was some danger, even at that there was some danger introduced, you remember. Now prior to Abraham, as I said, the focus seemed to be on the enormity of sin. You had Adam and Eve cast out of the garden so that no one had better say, once in the garden, always in the garden. Of course, if the doctrines of men are true, that, that would be true. And then he cursed Cain. Then the flood came. Then they did, with the dispersion at Shinar, it came. Then the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah came. See, he's focusing on why a Savior is needed. Yeah, that's right. I don't think a lot of people know why a savior was needed. But he was needed, sorely needed. And these are things that must be taught. What Abraham learned, he had to, he had to pass it on. He had to, he had to build a climate now that God could operate in, because God doesn't operate in a climate of ignorance. 
He doesn't do it. You have to know God before he even settles around you someplace. You have to know him. You have to be acquainted with him. Must be taught. And I don't care how avid a Bible reader you are, what we're going to say tonight, you'd miss this, you wouldn't see this. You may have been a Christian 30 years, you didn't see this. Why not? Because sin did that to the human race. Sin, sin blinded humanity and dulled their senses and knocked the edge off their aptitude. So God could be doing a great thing, they didn't know it. So God now, now he's got to declare mm -hmm. yeah. what he's going to do. I, I took the time to trace up to this point all of Abraham's responses to God. They're in a the little box there. You can look at them at your leisure. But he never had an unfavorable response to God. He never had a recorded unfavorable response to God. That's, <laughs> that's quite a thing to ponder. And does that mean he never did? No, it means that that's how God wants him to be remembered. And whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. be to the man mm -hmm. that casts aspersions at Abraham. Amen. He's Amen. not going to get by with it. Yeah, that's right. Not when God's gone to this extent mm -hmm. to present a pristine person yes, that's right. before you. That always God told him to do something. He did it, said leave her, and he left. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to be, give you this land to your seed, so he builds an altar. He said, I'll give you the land, now rise and walk through it, so he moves to Bethel and starts walking. God told him his heir would come from his own bowels, and at that point he quit talking about mm -hmm. yeah. anybody else, Ishmael or anybody else. At 99 years of old age, God confirmed the covenant, instituted the covenant of circumcision, and that day he circumcises everybody in his house, and Ishmael and himself, too, instant type response. The Lord appears the three mess in the form of three messengers to him, in the plain of Mamre. Somewhere in that, after he announced the birth of Isaac, he divulges what he's going to do at Sodom, and right away Abraham pleads for the righteous. God told Abraham to hearken one time to his voice of his wife. Cast away a bound woman out. He did the next day he cast him out. So that's, that's the nature of Abraham's life. Whatever God told him, he did. You want to lay that alongside your life? Do you do what God tells you to do? do you, how long does it take you to do it? Or do you have to kind of like wake up a little bit? Before? Not Abraham. He was alert right away. Other things Abraham did that people might find fault with him was because of a lack of revelation. It wasn't because of a, a bad state of heart yeah, that's right. yeah. or a dull state of mind or a lack of receptivity to God. It wasn't because of that. Yes, right. It was because of a lack of revelation. As soon as he got revelation he, he didn't think that way anymore that's right. at all. So he responds to God faithfully. That's what faith does. He's telling you what faith does. This, this is what faith does. Mm -hmm. yes, amen. If a person doesn't respond to God, faith is the problem. Yes. That's what the problem is. But see, people take faith for granted. Mm -hmm. Well, what the church is in the shape it's in in our day, nobody should be blabbing about having a lot of faith. Because the conditions that exist are not conditions produced by faith. Yes, right. They're conditions produced by unbelief. So Abraham, he stands for this. Now our text says that after these things, that's after the agreements with Abimelech and all the things that surrounded that, God did tempt Abraham. Now some people don't like that language, tempt. It's a valid word. Test or try is the emphasis of it. Yeah. He didn't tempt him to do evil. God tempts no man to do evil. Right. But he tests or tries. This is what he does. Now this word is translated tempt here. In other places translated prove, mm -hmm. try, so forth. It's used 33 times in scripture. And I list them there for you. And what the word that's used. 
approve, tempt, try. The idea is he's testing the spiritual tensile or strength of the individual. It is, as we find it, is it because like God doesn't know? Yeah. That's not it. That's right. There's other personalities he wants to know. Amen. There's other personalities God wants to know the effectiveness of his work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because on the surface it doesn't look like he could work with these sinful people. Angels, they didn't understand this because they only had the example of Satan and God made no attempt to recover Satan. That's right. He didn't make any cover to attempt to straighten him out and things like that. And so God's in the process of demonstrating, see, this is a real work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And these people say, I'm going to put them to the test now. Most of the time, it's God that does the testing or trying or tempting. Sometimes the people do. Sometimes people tempt God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They try and put God to the test. So God said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, don't you mm -hmm. don't you try and do something to see if I'll keep my word to what I'd do if you did that. Amen. Oh, don't you put me to the test. One time God did tell him to put him to the test. Oh yes, Sister Nikki. I was just thinking also, um, the Lord is showing other principal or other angels and things like that. He also is confirming in the believer. That's right. Um, That's their, right. Their own faith. Amen. So in times of doubt, you can remember when um, you can look back in your life and, and see where you did follow the Lord, and it'll confirm to your heart that you do have faith. Amen. That's good. One time, God. Uh, challenged people to try him. Well, this is kind of an up-to-date thing. There's still people today that haven't learned from Malachi. <laughs> There's still people like this. But anyway, here's what he said. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Well, the, the tithes were the support of the people doing this, quote, service of God. Mm -hmm. Bring them all in that there may be meat in my house and prove me. Yeah, there, there it is. Prove me here where saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Do you, you think you <laughs> do you think God can do that? Yeah, a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. Oh no, a lot, a lot of people don't. So there's a time where it was legitimate to prove God, but it's not the only case like that. Now, it's God's manner to test people. Let's establish this. It's God's manner to, to prove or test his people. God tried or tested Israel. He said, I'll rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather at a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they'll walk in my law. So I want to... <laughs> Exodus 20, 20 says, Fear not, for the Lord has come to prove you. Job was tried. He talked about it. He knoweth the way that I take when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold. See, so I'm told this is God's manner. Sometimes you may be under a test and you gripe about it because you think things aren't going right and you see you, you got to come up higher now. Amen. Jeremiah was tried Thou, o Lord, knowest me, thou hast seen me, and tried my heart toward thee. See, see you know, God, this is what God does. Yes. Hezekiah was tried. The same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gion and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Howbeit, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that he had done in the land, God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. Remember, he displayed all his treasures, showed them off, cast his pearls before the swine, so to speak. God has tested him. Philip, Philip the apostle, Jesus te tried him, tested him. Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread for these that they may eat? This he said to prove him. 
He did flunk the test. First he said, well, you got some money, but that's not enough. And the lad here has a five loaves and two fish, but what is that? Yeah. It was a test. At what point do you say it's impossible? Huh? Is exactly what point do you come to where you say, well, that, that, that's, that's impossible? That's a test. <laughs> it's a test. Believers are tried. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried. See, that's what he's talking about. The righteous are tried. The Lord trieth the righteous. That's, this is God's manner. And discerning people know this. But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. Do they know this? The godly want God to try them. Amen. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try the, my reins and heart. Search me, O Lord. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See, the, if you don't want God to do this, he does it anyway. This is what God does. You know, this is not a popular message. But it, I would that it was preached more. Some men have concocted a doctor that has God always aloof. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, that's their message. He's always way off there someplace. Others present a God who, who can look a person into salvation. You think he looks at him and it all, it all is done. Still others have a view of divine love that doesn't allow for testing. They say that God would never do that. Yeah, right. God doesn't want to hurt you. Well... No, I'm, I'm, God doesn't want to hurt you, but sometimes trials do hurt. Yeah, that's right. So a test may not appear to be a test. You have to have spiritual understanding to detect a test. Yeah. It may look like some social matter or job matter or home matter. It may not look, it look like a test at all, but it, it was, it's a test. To the casual observer, it might appear that Job just fell on some hard times, that's all. Yeah. Weather patterns were bad. People got, robbers were more plentiful. But God, uh, when God sent manna to Israel every day, it wasn't to bless them, it was to test them. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. To test them. Maybe you're, maybe you right now, maybe you're, you're eating high on the hog, as they say. Things going along real well. Got plenty of money in the bank. Car's working good. House is fine. No bills. It's a test. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Amen. Sometimes that's one of the hardest tests to pass. Amen. Hezekiah's test. Looked like an opportunity to openly share and say, look how God's blessed me. Look all this stuff God's given me. He told it to the wrong people. It was a test. Yeah. Some things are reserved to be told to the sheep. Yeah. And it's possible that God tests a person by lying but come into sudden and sudden riches. Just there he is. Sudden riches. Has an extremely lucrative job. Never things. But it's a it's a test. While other people suddenly lose everything they had. <laughs> and that's a test. That's what it is. See, it changes things when you can see this. Amen. See, we must assist one another, help one another recognize Amen. tests. And it is, after all, God with whom we have to do. Amen. He would get down to the bottom line. That's the one we have to do. That's the one we're dealing with, is God. We're not, not dealing with Satan. We're not dealing with people. We're dealing with God. And when it gets right down to the bottom line. Actually, everything should be traced back to God. Amen. Part of explaining the way we've lived, some people say when it says that uh, we must all give an account to God, some versions say we'll explain the way we live. Part of the explanation is why we live the way we did. That, that will have to be explained. We have to give you an account. Why did you, why did you live that way? Why did you, in hopes of having a more secure home, why did you take your family out of a godly assembly 
so you can make more money. Exactly why did you do that? In that day of judgment, that's going to happen. And whoever did it will be very, very sorry they did it at that time. So Abraham would be put to the test, as I said, not because God didn't know, because God had already said in Genesis 18, I know him. So God already understood him. But there's more involved in the works of God than God himself and just men. It's observable to other personalities also. So the resiliency of Abraham's faith, I kind of like that word, the resiliency of Abraham's faith, he could stand the heat, stand the cold, stand the drought, stand the flood. He could, the resiliency of Abraham's faith is going to be confirmed and it stands tall in the gale of divine testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God throws his people into the refiner's pot. That's right. And it's so that real faith might surface. Mm -hmm. See, although God knows all things, the nature of salvation demands testing because you, it's not enough just to make claims. Mm -hmm. We've been called into the fellowship of God's Son. All right, that, that's something active. We have what the scriptures call the communion of the Holy Spirit. All right, that's, that's some interaction. We've called into the fellowship of the Father and the Son, First John 1, 3 says. So, see, these relationships we have, they, they are all active and productive. And so it's not enough to say, well, I have it. Because you may not, you may have it, but not as much as you think. So mm -hmm. testing becomes necessary. You've been talking about assurance, sir. This, this test, when you pass the test, it creates this kind oh, yeah. of assurance. Amen. To where you'll be able to... Gee, there's harder tests up ahead. Abraham didn't start out sacrificing his son. Oh, no. So, I mean, your tests are, are in, in order that you might stand a greater test. Amen. Amen. You know, it really pays off to spend some time and consider it. Faith. Now, oh, yes. it comes from God. Oh, yeah. yes. And what a power it is. Yeah. And He's demonstrating, like you said, to yeah. everybody. Like yeah. when I get involved, look what happens. That's yeah. right. Yeah, he's given us X amount of time yeah. to let Satan come down and He's just ravished everybody, everything, yeah. and it just looks really bad. But then God comes in and He gives men faith. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Even though the shackles hurt him. Yeah. Mr. Barber. I was considering a test in um, the academic realms is to test and yeah. see how well the student is that's able right. to put together and use yeah, that's right. what he has learned up to that point. That's right. And that's involved also in the testing of the Lord. How well can we use what the that's Lord good. has given us uh -huh. in this Amen. time of testing? That's mm -hmm. good. Amen. Can't put you in a situation where you have to use it. Yeah, uh -huh. Yeah. too, you had uh, made a comment that the Lord already knew Abraham and he already knew how Abraham would respond to this, but the Lord allowed for this to happen and, and tempted Abraham in order that those of us that would come after would see how faith responds. That's it. Amen. And this is yeah. how faith responds. Even if you have your only son whom you love and God asks you to offer him up, faith will do this. Faith will do it. And it also shows us the Lord is, is setting a foundation for what Christ was going to do and what, what the Father was going to do through Christ um, when, he, when he came. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this is, this is one of the... Uh, Sacred rooms of scripture, yes. Whenever the faith of the saints is tested, and they overcome by that same faith, in, a, in a, some measure, Satan is judged. Yes, amen. And Jesus is bringing all things into one. This also opens up a, a venue where heavenly hosts become involved mm -hmm. in this. He, he employs the angels to to minister at certain times. And, and it's not just that they're kind of like in this this large auditorium just viewing it. They're actually participating mm -hmm. in this also. And this has something to do with the way things are going to work in the world to come. Amen. <laughs> Good. Amen. 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 Yeah. Later, the Apostle Paul would write, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found? Yes, but when he continues according to the flesh, and yeah. so he's drawing a contrast there, yeah. but he begins with that. What is our father Abraham found? found. Uh -huh. 
Mm. It's like finding a treasure in a field, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, now he tempted Abraham, so now he's gonna. Now we're gonna get into what he actually did. It's an angel said unto him from heaven. I mean, I don't know how an angel from heaven, how this sounds, but I, think I have an idea. It's very arresting. And said unto him, Abraham. Abraham didn't say, what, what, what was that? I heard something. What, what, did it thunder? He said, here I am. Yeah. Amen. That's a, it's all faith. Now, this is what faith does. Faith, it doesn't make any difference whether you're in the field or in the trial or in the furnace or in the lion's den or where. Faith responds instantly to God. Abraham said, here, I, here am I. Lo, I'm listening. This, yes. That's, that's something that faith works out in you too. You're able to hear God. Yeah, that's right. So you're able to know that's God and listen. Amen. Now this is the first time in the scriptures that here am I is said. Mm -hmm. This is not what Adam said. Huh? Said it, Adam, where art thou? He didn't say, Here am I. And things that progressed downward uh, to Abraham's day, but he still said, Here am I. I'm here. Here I am. I'm here. This is after Abraham had walked with God for 25 years. At least 25 years, possibly more. Here I am. Of course, that's what he first called him he said that also others who responded to the voice of the Lord with these words here am I or Jacob he said here am I or here I am Moses responded that way at the burning bush Moses Moses here I am Isaiah responded that way, who will I, whom shall we send who will go for us here am I <coughs> Saul of Tarsus said so the divine voice, who art thou, Lord? See, what wilt thou have me to do? See, it's instant type response. That's what faith does. Those who do not live in this manner under the Lord, they're slow to recognize when God's dealing with them. I can't, it's a big handicap. Now we have an excellent example of the concentration of faith and how it won't be distracted in the prophet Elijah. This is at a time when he was especially weary. He just got through slaughtering 450 prophets of Baal and he may have slaughtered 400 others that were the prophets of the grove that turned up at the contest. So it was a potential 850. I mean now think about what it would take. I mean I'm sure they didn't just stand there what it would take to slay 450 minimum, 850 max. It's right after that is when this happened. And uh, as soon as he killed him, Jezebel sent a message to him. Western Union, so to speak. So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as a life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. You know, Elijah should be real bold. Test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on hearing this, Elijah rose, went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which is where our text is in Beersheba. Came to Beersheba. It was there that the mighty prophet, he just wore out. He prayed, it's enough. I've had it. It's enough now, O Lord, take away my life. He, he refused to take it himself. Take away my life, for I'm not better than my father's. The Lord didn't even answer him. Didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even answer him. But he sent an angel who, who woke him up. He fell, then he fell asleep and he woke him up. The angel Lord came again, and, and came again the second time and touched him. Said, rise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. I've got a special meal for you here. Yes, get up now and eat. And it was a significant meal because he rose and he went 40 days in the strength of that. 
This is this is where he had to go. He had to walk forty four for forty days. I mean that's a what is that, eight hundred miles or something like that? It's a long walk. Yeah. Went in the strength of that food. When he got to, got there, he had Horeb, that's where the law was given, at Horeb. He got to Horeb. And there the uh, the Lord asked him, What are you doing here? <laughs> test. It's a test. Yeah. Well, what are you doing here? So he said, oh, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. The children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets of the sword. I, even I, only I am left, and they seek to take away my life. And the Lord said, Go forth and stand upon the mount. Now you got to get up higher now, Elijah. You're not down here at the foot of Horeb. You like Moses? I get up there, get up to the top of the mountain, walk up there. Now it's during this time when he's up there that the sensitivity of Elijah surfaces. Remember, he'd been wearied. He is so tired, just take my life. He was discouraged because there wasn't anyone that he knew about siding with him. He gets up there and they count. Here's what follows. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind went rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks. I guess that was some wind. Yeah. Yeah. These are mountain rocks. These aren't little pebbles. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake... But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord is not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the inner end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him. What doest thou here, Elijah? We're going to go over this again. How was Elijah able to hear that? Still small voice. You know, when you hear big noises, you kind of overlook little little sounds. How is he? That's faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what that is. That's faith. <laughs> faith can hear a message when it, there's been a whole lot of distracting things happen. But it hears anyway. And then test is continued. Then God gives him some, something to do. He doesn't say, oh, rest here while you've been you have been very zealous for me, and you wore yourself out killing the prophets of Baal, and you just got through walking for 40 days, and I know you're tired. Well, he didn't let him rest. He tells him, I want you to go over to the king of, of Syria and anoint Hazel king of Syria. And then after that, I want you to anoint Jehu, king of Israel and after that I want you to anoint Elisha to take your place <laughs> so much for sympathy for being tired but this was a test mm -hmm. then he says I left me 7,000 that haven't bowed the knees he no nah, you were wrong saying you're the only one seven all right so there were 850 prophets of Baal but there's 7,000 prophets of God that Jezebel couldn't get to. So Elijah heard that voice because that's what faith does. Amidst all the noise and jangling and distracting things, the people of God have got to be able to make a transition from that account to their own life. Because there'll be sections in your life where there's a lot of noise going on. There's a lot of wind, a lot of earthquake, and a lot of fire. Just a lot of things going on there distracting. But right in the middle of that, he'll whisper. Yeah. <laughs> now, the flesh would pass it by, but faith, faith, it doesn't. Amen. Amen. So now God has Abram's attention. Hear my. Now he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your son. 
He doesn't say, I'd like you to ask Isaac if he'd be amenable to what I'm going to suggest he do. I'd like you to have a talk with Isaac and see how cooperative. He just says, take your, he's a young man by this time. Possibly as much as 33 years old, the youngest would be 18, estimate. Take your son. I now imagine you're in the USA. I mean, <laughs> I mean you, well, that's why the Bible wasn't written here. Yeah. Nobody would understand it. Yeah. That's why Jesus didn't come to a place like this. Because yeah, right. no one would have an understanding of it. So Isaac was not a boy. He was a man. And he said, take, take, your, take now your son. And he adds a little, little more sharper test. Thine only son. Now, from actually, from a from the standpoint of nature, he wasn't Abraham's only son, as it says in Genesis sixteen fifteen. Hagar bare Abraham a son. See, there it is. Genesis seventeen twenty three. Abraham took Ishmael his son. There it is again. Seventeen twenty six. The self same day was Abraham circumcised, and Ishmael his son. There it is again. Again in Genesis twenty five eight and nine. Refers to Abraham's sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Genesis 25, 12. These are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Genesis 28, 9. Then when Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had mayeth lath the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. And there it is again. But now we're talking about God's purpose. We're not talking about nature here. We're not talking about biological. There's only one son God directly mm -hmm. caused to be born. Amen. Amen. Thy only son. Mm -hmm. Take him. This is how God reasons, see. Mm -hmm. I think of it this way. God looks at what you have, and the only thing that counts is what he gave you. That's how it is. That you look at what God gives you and you can say, these are my only resources. Yeah. Which would be very, very right and assessing it that way. I mean, you may have all these degrees and titles and so forth in the local university and have them all. He said, now I want you to take your life, your only life now, the one I gave you. Yeah, that's, right. that's what I want you to offer to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I gave you. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's good stuff, huh? <laughs> The counsel of God determines what he does. Mm -hmm. He works all things after the counsel of his own will. So far as God is concerned, Abraham had only mm -hmm. one son. Even though you could just take a DNA test and say, oh, he has two, no, one, one son. Only one son. That's the one I want you to take. Uh, whom thou lovest. Oh, now we, the test gets a little more severe now. Abraham had learned to live with Isaac in the house, grown attached to him. Thought of him as the seed God promised, see. And we know that that's, this isn't because Abraham didn't love Ishmael, because he asked God, oh, that Ishmael might live before the taking a blessing. And, and God listened to Abraham. He said, in Genesis 17, 20, as for Ishmael, I've heard thee. That's right. I've heard thee. Behold, I've blessed him. I'll make him fruitful. See, so it wasn't that he didn't, he didn't care for Ishmael. Yeah. Yeah. But his superior care yeah. was for Isaac. Amen. 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 I want you to take, you, take your son, your only son, the one you love, and I want you to go to the, to the land of Moriah. Not to the city of such as the land. Like I said, I'd, I'd like you to go to the, to the land of Russia. Head out there. Land of Moriah. Well, actually, it was pretty short. He only had to walk 50 to 60 miles. And by this time, he's probably like a, Abram is probably like 120, 130 years old, about this time. So we're talking about a, a trip of 50 to 60 miles. Land of Moriah. 
Oh, well, then those who seek convenience from God, they're making a big mistake. Yeah, right. Well, I've been having a lot of problems. Lord, I wish I could have it a little easier. Because it's just, I just have too much happening. Now, if you listen, God will say, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure you're strong enough to have it easy. You might wander a little bit if it gets too easy. Get a nice job, huh? Nice security, and you might forget. That's what he told Israel, you know. That's right. Amen. You might forget. Uh -huh. So do not imagine that God always will ask you to do something that appears very doable. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes it appears very undoable. Yeah. But faith, it doesn't think like this. That's right. Faith says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, that's how faith, that's how faith answers. Now this mountain he's journeying to, it's the same place where David was commanded by Gad to build an altar under the Lord. And it, was, it stayed the plague God had, it, so that only 70,000 people died. Stayed the plague, built that altar there. And then Solomon built the temple yeah. mm -hmm. on that place. Yeah. <laughs> Scripture categorically says this. He purchased the field, the threshing floor of Aruna, built an altar there, and then later says Solomon, and he quotes that passage, and Solomon built the temple there. You see how God's working toward... Yeah. Later on this very mount, Jerusalem was built on this mount. Mm -hmm. And Christ is going to be sacrificed on that, mm -hmm. on that high place, yeah. Jerusalem. Huh? Amen. Now the fact that God makes known the details of his will while they're engaged in the doing of it. See that again, we want to go over that once again. That when, you go, when you do what God says, you find out more as, as you're mm -hmm. going along. Abraham was called was to go to Canaan. God didn't tell him where, he didn't tell him Canaan. He said, a land I'll, I'll show you. Then as he went, then he showed him. Abraham's journey to the mountain on which he was to offer Isaac. And then as he's going, he told him, on a mountain I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So on his trip he showed him. Joseph was called to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But he's there 13 years before God showed him. What he's to do. And Israel's exodus from Egypt to the promised land, they did. He showed them the way, along the way. Yeah. Amen. God promised David he'd guide him with his eye, but he didn't tell him how or where. He just along the way. Jesus, he instructed his, his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power from on high. He didn't say how long. That's right. Yeah. See, they had to, this is the nature of testing, see. Yeah. Paul called to the apostleship, but he had to learn about it. A little bit in Arabia, a little bit here. He had learned about it along the way. And when he, when God called Paul and company to Macedonia, they heard a voice, come over to Macedonia. Macedonia, that's a, that's a geographic area. That's not like a city. He didn't tell them where to go, they, but along the way they figured out Philippi. We need to go there, and they found some women down by a river. That this, this is it, this is it. Made known along the way. And Paul's call to Rome. He said, Thou wilt testify to me in Rome. He didn't tell him how he was going to get there. That it was going to be on a ship and a shipwreck. And See, God doesn't give you the details before you start. Amen. That's why it's wrong not to tell God's people about their inheritance. You're thwarting what, how God works. This is how God works. You get them started. Then you start telling them about where they're going. Yeah. So we're living in a day when they supposedly get them started, but they don't tell them where they're, yeah. where they're going. And when you get there now, I want you to offer them a, there for a burnt offering. Now this is the second reference to burnt offering in Scripture. The only other reference is when Noah had burnt offerings of all the clean animals and the fowls. That's the only other reference to a burnt offering. The next in mention of it is found the time Israel was delivered from Egypt about 500 years later and then they'll mention burnt offering again. So this, 
This is not like a frequent term or something Abraham would say, oh, I don't know what that is. See, it wasn't that sort of thing. This is a relatively new thing from a human point of view. In fact, the next reference to fire pertained to the, the first reference to fire re, pertained to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the next reference to fire is when Moses saw a bush that burned with fire. See, that, see this is, wasn't a lot of talk about burnt offerings and fire. And it just wasn't a lot of talk. So I understand this doesn't mean that Abraham was not acquainted with burnt offerings. But his context wasn't within what was written. It was within the context of experience. That's right. Amen. Noah must have passed that down and so forth. Just said there because his son knew about it. Yes, right. Because that's why he asked. So he must have passed this thing. That's right. Amen. See, the, what what the marvel of it is is so little was said yes, about it. Uh -huh. See, if you had volumes uh -huh. said about it or a library about it on the subject, then you could understand. Yeah. People, but this this wasn't the case. This was just very sparse mentionings of this. And I want you to go to Mount. This is Mount Moriah. And this is the reference in Second Chronicles that I referred to Solomon. Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord had put unto David his father, in the place where David had prepared in the threshing floor of, of Ornan and the Jebusite. So he nails it down. Yeah. That's where apparently Abraham went. So like Sinai, this mountain is noted throughout history, high place. Actually, this is a more notable. Mm -hmm. This is probably where Jesus was crucified, too. Mm -hmm. And offer him there. You know, offer him there. For a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, you can't think of this in human terms because it, it'll just stagger you. Yeah. Uh -huh. You won't be able to see much in it because it transcends any kind of human experience. It makes people think of being hard-hearted and things like this, but he wasn't hard-hearted. Mm -hmm. Whom thou lovest. See, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't it. He's noted for believing the Lord. He's showing you the extent. Yes. If Jesus said, let their dead bury their dead, mm -hmm. but come and follow me. He expects that to be obeyed. Yes, amen. Yep. He does. Mm -hmm. He says, if you, whoever doesn't forsake all that he has, and he lists off all relatives in your own life, you can't be my disciple. See, this is how God is. Why? Because these are tests. Mm -hmm. When God says something like this, put to death your members that are upon the earth. It's a test. Yes, amen. It's a trying of your faith. Will you believe that that needs to be done? Will you engage in it? Or will you loaf along and allow things to crop up in your life that you could have stopped? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, you have, to, you have yeah. to think these things out. Well, Abraham, how are you going to respond to that? That's a pretty tough one. <coughs> well, he rose up early in the morning. Now, the scripture says early in the morning, it means generally when it was dark. A great while before day, that's when... Mary came to the tomb early in the morning, a great while before day. So it was still dark. He got up. And he went right to work. He saddled his ass. And he, he got picked out two young men, go with him. And he got Isaac up. Then he cut some wood. Now, I did a little bit of research on what it takes to like, cremate a body. A very, very hot furnace. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're going to burn offering. You're not talking about burning balsa wood. So you had to be a special kind of wood, which is split very, it'd be hard. So when he said he cut the wood, I, <laughs> this is a hefty job. But that sacrifice involves this. Sacrifice involves some heavy, yes. heavy activity. 
took the two young men to help her and the witnesses. Well, some witnesses come along. Took Isaac, his son. They all rose up and went. Started the trip. Three days. They walked for th three days. So that means it was roughly 50 to 60 miles. Now on the third day, I think I think I see it. Sort of far off. Yes. Something about this wood I saw is that it was freshly cut. That's yes, right. This wasn't yeah. a second thought. This Abraham was giving his best to the Lord. Didn't go out to the wood pile, did he? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Amen. <laughs> he saw it afar off. <laughs> well, actually, when you're doing the will of God, that is the way it is. Uh -huh. When you're pondering the will of God, you kind of see it at, see it at a distance. Yeah. Well, this is where I'm going to have to go. This is what I'm going to have to do. And you're, it's a test, see? You willing, you willing to go this last distance? Saw the place. Remember, God said to one of the mountains that I'll show thee. So apparently, he showed him now. He showed him. How did he show him? I don't know how he showed him. But he showed him. He knew it. Now, it's God manner, as I said, to give men an idea of where they're going while they're en route. Yeah. Like Peter, he not to that point when he was called to go to Cornelius, he hadn't put together the preaching to the Gentiles. This hadn't, but he said, now I want you to, there's three men down there at the door. Uh, go with them. When he got to Cornelius' house, things had kind of been put together. Here's what he said to Cornelius. He commanded us to preach unto the people and testify that it is he was as the ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Then later he told us, God showed me that the Gentiles aren't unclean. Yeah, uh -huh. He learned that <laughs> on the way. Amen. The Thessalonians, they were themselves new believers. But Paul wrote, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. Now they were confused about this matter. But they were living by faith, and so on the way, God cleared it up. Yes, amen. But what if a person isn't living by faith? It's not cleared up. That's right. God won't clear it up. Well, I won't. He will not. Yeah. He will not clear it up. Got to be on the way, on the highway. I love that. Considering two different aspects of this, sometimes whenever the Lord shows the person where they're headed, it can bring some relief in the yeah. trial. Mm -hmm. But then other times, it may be in the situation with Abraham, it might be an added burden on the test because he knew that was the place he was going to have to go through with killing his son. Yes. So he saw what was what was coming and that may have been an added layer Amen. So speak, on the test itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody can see this, can't you? This thing of being showed and taught in the way, as the scripture says, in the way. So it was on the third day that he saw this and he said, um, to the young man with him, he said, now, I remember he saw, it, he wasn't at the foot of the mountain yet, he was way down there. He told the young man, he said, abide ye here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going we're gonna to go worship. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, then we'll come again to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's faith talking there. Amen. Now worship, this word's not mentioned, actually it's not mentioned very much in scripture except in connection with Israel's service, the tabernacle service was called worship. Mm -hmm. Not mentioned very often, so like how he come across this mm -hmm. word is kind of amazing. I don't think there was any, not wasn't a lot of references to it. Mm -hmm. Abide here, that's like Terry in Jerusalem. <laughs> Wait here. 
Now these two young men, they only need to be told this one time. Yeah. You don't have to sit down and say, we're going to be, we may be gone for a long while, you'll be out here by yourself, it could be kind of dangerous, so God prepare yourself. He didn't have to give any further explanations, he just told them to wait, and they did. We go yonder and we're going to worship. He's going to offer, he's, he's going to offer his son as a burnt offering, uh -huh. and he called that worship. Yeah. That's a different concept of worship yeah, than we got today, let me tell you. Amen. So he equated obedience. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I present you by the mercies of the living God to present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, whole and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Uh -huh. Other versions say worship because it's service in the tent of, sent, yeah. sense of tabernacle mm -hmm. okay. service. In fact, it's when he did the things that Israel had been given in Romans 9, 3 through 5, he mentions the service was given to them. Some versions say the worship. The routine under the law, worship was a routine. That's what it was. Under Christ, that's not what it is. You don't, you don't present an animal, you present your bodies. That's something you're in all the time. As long as you're in the world, you're in this body. And Max, some versions say, which is your act of worship? Present your body as a living sacrifice to God, which is your act of worship. <laughs> this, they didn't go to a, a worship service. In fact, we don't have any record of a worship service in the scripture unless it be the tabernacle routine which has now been obviated. Yeah. Now there's a higher mm -hmm. routine. See, you're, in other words, your worship is offering your life to God. Amen. That's, right. That's your worship. Amen. And if you don't present yourself to God, it doesn't make any difference what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, that's right. That's what worship is. Yeah. Don't confuse praise with worship. Yeah. They're not the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not the same thing at all. Given, which is why it's such a terrible sin to give yourself to anything other than God because you're worshiping them. That's right. And worship in the New Covenant Scriptures is very rarely mentioned. We have the circumcision that worship God in the Spirit. Right. Not we ought to, we worship God, not in the service, uh -huh. in the spirit. Yeah, that's right. We re rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh. See, that's a real worshiper. That's there. So we're going to go, we're going to go and worship. And then we're going to come again. That's, that's the historical version. And then the Holy Spirit, he elaborates on it. He says he was convinced God was going to raise him from the dead. Mm -hmm. So he, he thought he was going to present Isaac, God, the, he was going to be burned up, mm -hmm. and God's going to raise him from the dead, and they'd come back. Mm -hmm. That's how he reasoned, that's faith. Yeah. <laughs> that's faith. So it looks like, you say, well, I lost my job, I lost my house, I lost, you know. You've got to have this, and I'm going to come again. Yeah. You've got to have that attitude and that frame of mind. Mm -hmm. I'll come again. I'm going to worship and we're going to come again. God's going to raise me up and lift me up again. I'm, I'm coming out of this lion's den. Amen. And out of this furnace of fire. And out of this prison with the shackles on my feet. We'll come again. So if you're experiencing a time of restriction, you know, and you're kind of held down, you have that come again. I once told a, the faculty members at local college, that I belong to the Coming Down the Hill Church. Yeah. It's the one I belong to. Said so when they went up the mountain, that was one frame of mind. But when they came down, yes, they were skipping like the calves. Yeah. That's what they want. You remember the how it is coming back down the mountain. That's that's what we have in Christ. We have the coming down the mountain Amen. experience. We're going to come again. Yes. Even though Abraham was te <clears throat> technically not correct in his yeah. reasoning in this, the Lord still accredited to him his faith. That's, yeah, right. that's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see in Scripture that 
in a sense, he was correct. He just, he did just, he didn't know the means how it was going to be accomplished, yeah. Now, considering the time that this saying was uttered, it's one of the most profound statements of Scripture. Considering when it was spoken, before the law, when hardly any kind of revelation had been given at all about the purpose of God, it's an astounding revelation. See, God had not given any hint to the world up to this time that the Messiah was going to die. The only thing he had, Satan would bruise, the serpent would bruise his heel, and that was kind of vague, but that didn't sound like a death blow. Yeah, that's right. The death blow is what Satan got, not what Jesus got. So see, people couldn't think in terms of a, of a Savior dying. God hadn't revealed that yet, but, but Moses, deep down faith, kind of sensed this, see? He was able to think right. There had been no, no hint that atonement was going to be accomplished by the offering of a man. There had been no hint of this up to this time. Not a single word had been divulged to humanity that sin would be expiated by the death of a Savior. It had been revealed. So Abraham could have reasoned that Isaac himself was the promised seed. God hadn't made that that clear yet either. The only event that could possibly have led him to this conclusion is that God made Adam and Eve coats of skin, and you'd have to do a lot of heavy thinking to come up with it there. But he did. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Now, in... In this, God provided fundamentally for himself to satisfy the, the demands of his righteousness. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah. For instance, God sent him into the world. His grace was upon him when he was in the world. He anointed him. He delivered him up. He raised him, received him back from heaven. He exalted him, see? And he's going to send him back. Yeah. See, so it's God's, this is something God is doing yeah. through all of this. Because of this primitive time, it's not possible that just human reasoning could have deduced what Abraham concluded. This, this is not, not possible. It was godly reasoning, though. It's how faith thinks. This was faith. This, this is faith in primitive times thinking this thing out. This has got to mean... I know God's not going to go back on what he said to do. It's going, there's going to be an offering on top of this mountain. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. At the time, he didn't know what the offering would be, but he knew when, he came, when the offering is over, Isaac and him would come back. So Isaac, Abraham proceeds with the sacrifice. They come to the place. That's what God said. Go to a place that I'll show thee. So they showed him. They come to the place. I had a lot of work to do yet now. We come this 60 mile, walked up the mountain, however far that was, and then when he got up the top, he, uh, he built an altar. It must have taken, <laughs> must have taken some time. And, he, and he, he laid the wood on Isaac but on the way up, built an altar, then he laid the wood in order, on the altar, I say in order, Laid the wood in order. Yeah. It says he laid the wood in order. Didn't just like stack up a pile of wood. He's going to lay Isaac on this. Right. Yeah. So he has to lay the wood in order. Later under the law, they, they did this when they had sacrifices. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Build an altar and put the wood in order, First Kings 18.33, see, this is, <laughs> this is God's banner. Yeah. The sacrifice has to be orderly. Mm -hmm. You might say anything associated with the Lord, and especially a sacrifice, must be done in decency and in order. Yeah. Yeah. Though the tabernacle, components of the tabernacle were, quote, set in order, Exodus 16.17. The lamps and the golden candlestick were set in order. Exodus 39, 37. The bread placed on the table of showbread had to be placed there in order. 
Exodus 14, 4. When an animal was dismembered for a sacrifice, the parts had to be placed in order upon the altar. The whole service of the house of the Lord was set in order. So it, it followed a certain kind of a sequence. Luke wrote to the, his gospel to Theophilus and said he set in order a declaration of those things which are most surely, most assuredly believed among us. He was an orderly presentation. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, I'll let all things be done decently and in order. See, so happenstance and confusion and this, this is not, God doesn't work these kind of things. This isn't how God is served. Rolling on the floor and grunts and groans and stuff. This is not how God works. Right, Orderly. Chaos and, yes, Chaos and disorderliness, they, they don't have a place. And then he, he bound Isaac, he tied him up. He didn't say, well, get up there on the altar, son. He tied him up. I don't know if he told him yet to this point. I don't know, but he tied him up. You think that was easy? Tied him up. Picked him up and laid him on top of the wood. Oh, it's a touching scene, yes. Uh, also, I like to see here that um, there was no struggle. He yes, tied right. him up, but there was That's no right. struggle. There was, That's so right. About a, a great fight that ensued. It was, it was all in decent order. That's it, right. Even when he tied him up, there was no fight, you know. I, I was thinking about another thing about this whole deal is we, we in particular here, live in a society that expects comfort in everything, in ease. And you see it whenever, um, throughout the scriptures, God, when God has uh, his people do stuff, it's never in ease. It's always, That's right. it's, there's something about um, making sacrifices and, 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 and pushing yourself that there's something we're going to be doing, I, I see that on, when we're with the Lord, that's going to take us to be able to, well, la like laziness is not good. No. But and there's going to be something that God's going to expect us. That I, I see that everything's working up to us being with Him for eternity. That laziness is not a part of His kingdom. Amen. Yes, and even while we're here, this this is the test. This is part of the test. Right. Ty and Isaac it was part of the test. Too, Isaac was being tested. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> you know, Jesus had the power to not lay down his life, but he laid it down. In yeah. Isaac, the age and the strength he was, he could have yeah. overpowered oh, yeah. Abraham, oh, but he yeah. didn't. He laid down his life. That's so. right. Yeah. Yes. He laid down his life. Yeah, some people can't get their child to the high chair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to think about things like this. We, we can... Yeah, we get accustomed to living in a society like this, but see, there's parts of the world they don't live like this. He must have heard from his father this, uh, the, the, the promise that Abraham received. See, Isaac was, was reasoning upon that promise yeah. also. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well... We know Isaac heard him say, I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again. So on the way, I don't doubt that Abraham spelled out some things and maybe told him, son, God's going to raise you from the dead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be concerned. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. he, didn't, he didn't offer any kind of resistance at all. Right. Yeah. Now the epistle of the Hebrews just spells out what Abraham's thinking process was. Indeed, in the sense that Isaac was figuratively dead, this is the Amplified Bible. Potentially sacrificed, he did actually receive him back from the dead. Yeah. So when it says from a sense, in a, in a sense, in a figure he received him, that's not referring to his birth. That's right, yeah, that's right. That's, that's referring to, so far as Abram was concerned, Isaac was as good as dead. That's right, go ahead. Amen. And when he came back with him, it was no different yes. than Amen. having him raised from the dead. Amen. The experience was no different. That's right, yeah. But why? Because he had already settled in his mind, he's going to offer Isaac. Yes. And his only divine intervention has stopped him. Right. Yes. He had carried it out. That's real faith now. See, that's faith. Faith doesn't balk at the most difficult of assignments. Some things that the Lord asks us to do, asks all disciples to do, 
Some people can't receive them now. They can't. They yeah. just can't receive them. Yeah. They think it's not right. And sometimes if you sacrifice this, the Lord gives it back to you. That's right. It, as far as Abraham was concerned, as far as his faith was That's concerned, right. he actually did. That's right. He actually did That's receive right. Isaac from the dead. That's right. Amen. See, God, without having to actually go through. God reckoned his intention That's right. as the actual thing. That's what he told the Corinthians when he's taking up a collection. Remember, he said, God receives according to what a man hath, not what he hath not. So the person says, Oh, I wish I could give a thousand dollars, but I only have two cents. So he gives it two cents, and so God then logs a thousand in the ledger. Yeah, that's right. This is how God is. Amen. So this is why you don't want to think about what am I able to do? What do I want to do? Yes. That's how you think it. That's what will be credited to you. Like if you don't want to do much, that's what will be credited to you, even though it looked on the surface like you did a lot. So he takes the knife now to slay him. Good as dead. It's raised. And the angel calls to him again from heaven. Said, Abraham, Abraham, two times. He said, here am I. I ain't got to see what he's going to start to do. See, if that would have been the average American citizen, as they could have been dead. He'd have brought it. He couldn't stop. See, some people are set a distance from God by the time they, they know God's talking, they've already carried out the, the wrong thing. They've done the wrong thing. Yeah. So the fact that he could answer instantly mm -hmm. in view of what he'd done and all the activities he went through and the question from Isaac and all this instantly, he says, here, here am I. The angel said, don't lay your hand on the lad, neither do him any harm. Now I know. It's the angel talking. Mm -hmm. Now I know that you really do fear God. Amen. The angels aren't omniscient. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I thought that you're going to talk to them like God's talking. Well, that's what angels do. Angels talk for God. So they say, I and mine, they're talking for God. They're an oracle of God. That's why they, but it's not, it's not God personally doing it. It's God saying it through the angels, see. Now I know. Principalities, here was a principality in power. He said he called, didn't he say he called from heaven? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So it was in heavenly places. He yeah. saw, Amen. He, he saw the manifold wisdom of God. God made this man what he is. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's right. Look at what he did there. Mm -hmm. Remember, Lamech killed a couple of men when he shouldn't have. And here, angel says, I had to stop him. I had to stop him, Lord. I see now. Yeah, I see. This thing about grace. I'm learning a little bit more about that now. Amen. Huh. I'm learning about faith. Whew. Yeah. Faith did. He, and he responds to me right away. Amen. Yeah, but again, it's, it's almost as though the Lord said you can stop him when you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, there are several places in Scripture where someone's name is called twice. It was always kind of an urgent situation. Here you have one, Abram, Abram. When God spoke to Jacob in the vision, he said, Jacob, Jacob. At the burning bush, the angel said, Moses, Moses. <laughs> when Jesus told Simon Peter he's going to be sifted, it said, Simon, Simon. <laughs> And when Jesus apprehended Saul, he said, Saul, Saul. See, so that's a, that's a heavenly emphasis. That, that calls for immediate mm -hmm. attention. And in all these calls that I just called, you mentioned, there was an instant response mm -hmm. in all of them. Now, this call is intended to interrupt mm -hmm. what Abraham was doing. And Abraham was doing what God told him to do. Yeah. How's that? It was the interruption. Now, there are in Scripture, of course, some interrupting calls. When Elijah was told to anoint Elisha prophet for his own placement, he found Elisha, and he was he is plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. That is, he had 12 yoke. He, he'd already plowed with 11, and now he's on the 12th, about ready to finish up the job, apparently. He's plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and Elijah comes by and throws his mantle on him. He interrupts what he's doing. And... Uh, Elisha left the oxen and ran after Elijah. See, he was busy working in the field. Mm -hmm. 
As soon as this happened, he right left. He's, and, uh, he said, let me go. Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I'll follow thee. And Elijah responded, go back again, for what have I to do to thee? The Amplified Bible says, and he, testing Elijah, said, go on back. What have I done to you? Settle it for yourself. You decide whether this is important enough to come or not. So what did he do? He goes back. He takes a yoke of oxen, slew them, boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, gave them to the people, and they did eat. And then he arose and went after Elijah. Elijah. That was all an interruption. All right? And then there was uh, Peter and Andrew. They were, they were casting their net into the sea. And Jesus interrupted them. He said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Then he said, wait, wait till we haul this catch. Wait till we haul one more catch in. They immediately. Yeah, right. So I'm showing what faith uh -huh. moves people to do. James and John, same thing. They were mending their nets. They must have had some hefty catches and broke their nets. They were mending their nets. He said, come follow me. And they left their father and their servants. They just uh -huh. Matthew, he's sitting at the seat of customs where they collect the taxes. He's sitting at the table. Jesus walks by and says, follow me. He leaves the table and follows him. Show you what faith does here now. Instant. Follows. All of these things were interruptions. These were interruptions. The people knew they were interruptions, but they knew who yeah, yeah. interrupted them. Amen. So they defaulted yeah, right. to that call. Who can forget the call of Saul of Tarsus? He was zealously persecuting the church when he was appre apprehended. And Jesus told him, all right, rise and go into the city. And he'll be told you what to do. Yeah. What did he do? He, he got up. He couldn't see, so the people helped him and laid him into the city. Immediately. He went immediately. Excuse me. Immediately. He'd been interrupted. And he knew it. Now, this is an area where People do have to be sensitive to this. You, you certainly can't legislate to anybody else in this. But there are far too many people who wear the name of Jesus who I know they've been interrupted. Christ has interrupted their routine and called them to something higher, but they didn't see it and they kept on plodding along, doing the same thing. I've seen people like that over the years deteriorate, and I can remember when I know God called them. I was there. Like when they were touched, but they just uh, they didn't move. What is that? That's unbelief. See, it's not. This isn't the way faith acts. Yeah. Here am I, and he goes ahead. The angel said, "Now I know." He didn't say, "I know you're obedient." Oh, I can see that you're obedient. He said, "I know you fear God." I know now you're afraid to disobey God, aren't you, Abraham? You're afraid not to do what God told you to do, aren't you? You fear God. See, the only reason some people shape their lives, they're afraid of men. So because of what men will do, they'll, they'll adjust their lives because they're afraid of men. But you fear God, you'll, if he tells you to do something, <laughs> you adjust your life. Now here, Abraham's sensitivity hasn't stopped. Abram sees behind him. Mm -hmm. I says he lifted up his, and looked, and behold, behind him yeah. was a ram mm -hmm. hung in a thicket by his thorns. Now God hadn't told him, "I'm going to have a substitute sacrifice," mm -hmm. as far as we know. But Abraham sensed this. Mm -hmm. He says, "I know I can't go back down this mountain till I've offered a burnt offering to God." I know now it can't be Isaac, so let's see. Ah! Yeah. It's a ram hung in the thicket. This is the first example in Scripture of a substitutionary sacrifice. Yeah. All the other sacrifices, they were done by men, not for men. Yeah. But here's a substitutionary sacrifice. It was a ram. I never could find out like what a ram is. I I checked all the 
historians, the Bible dictionaries, the encyclopedias, the commentaries. Nobody knows what a ram is. Some, some people think it's a male sheep, some think it's a male goat, some think it's an independent animal. But I did, it's some kind of animal is very strong and it was of age. A ram, like you wouldn't call a lamb, it's not called a ram, whether it's a sheep or goat. A ram is something that's grown up and is in, in full strength. The ram is to the flock what Jesus was to the other man. He was 30, <laughs> 30 years old. He was, in, he was in the strength. In other words, he offered his strength to God. It's one thing, we're glad for children to give themselves to God, but we, we look forward to when they give their strength. Give their strength to God. Ram skins, were they on the tabernacle? Ram skins, so it was a, they offered rams, it was a regular type of offering. And he offered that ram in the stead. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? In the stead of his son Isaac. Now, there are a number of types you see in this. Like Abraham's a type of God mm -hmm. offering his son. Mm -hmm. Christ, he's a type of Isaac mm -hmm. in the son. He's a type of the ram in the offerings. He, may, he has two kind of types. Mm -hmm. The altar, that's like the cross. Mm -hmm. It's a type of the cross, see. And the mount, that's like Jerusalem where Jesus where Jesus was offered. And Isaac, he's a double type. He's a type of Christ in that he's offered, but he's a type of sinners in that someone else had to take their place. See, so there's, there's a lot of types and shadows wrapped up in this event. Well, Abraham, he called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. That's the only time in the Bible that word is found. In the Hebrew or in the English. That's it. This is it. Jehovah Jireh. Jireh. The meaning of it is technically the Lord sees. We would say the Lord will see to it. Or the Lord will provide would be a clearer way of saying it. Which is what Abraham said he'd do. Yeah, that's right. Abraham said the Lord will provide himself a lamb, right? It's what he said he'd do. Yeah. There he did. He did exactly right. what what Abraham sensed he'd do. He did. Yeah. Amen. Jehovah Jireh named the place. Mm -hmm. Every time anyone come up the top of that hill, I can imagine Abraham revisiting that place saying, yeah, the Lord will provide. Amen. Here I was here, here I was. I know by experience the Lord will provide. Yeah, right. See, now some of you have passed through some hard circumstances uh -huh. yeah. and you've found by experience the Lord will provide. But I mean, you've learned it. Good to go back to the place, mm -hmm. to the actual place where it happened, to go back and recall. Ah, the Lord Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And then the, uh, the angel calls out to Abraham, Abraham again, the second time. He said, by myself, have, now he's speaking for God, by myself, I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because, because, because thou hast done this thing, and it's not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing thou bless thee, and in multiplying thou multiply thy seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. See, this is the before the fifth time he's talked like this to Abraham. But now he adds a because to it. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Now he adds a because to it. Now, actually, there's, uh, there's several of these in Scripture, these becauses. And only son. It's he, now, notice the, the, the magnitude of this promise. Now, Abraham's like 120, 130, about roughly since the beginning, roughly 50 years have passed. And Abraham has two sons. The one that God doesn't recognize and the other one that he does. God keeps telling them, multitude going to come, a multitude going to come from. 25 years pass. 
We, 20 years past, you don't have any. 25 years, you got one. After that, you got two. 50 years past, you got two. You keep stating this promise. I'm going to give you a multitude of hosts. Even though it doesn't look like it, you're getting old, you're getting ready to depart, and you haven't seen it. But because you did this, Abraham, in your old age, because you did this, I'm going to reaffirm this promise. Because you did this, I'm going to bless you. Now I want to read some of these because passages in Scripture. Because this is a perspective of God's working that you want to get hold of it. It can be distorted, I know that, but there's a holy way to view this. Here's what he said to Satan. Because thou hast done this thing, cursed art, see? That's right, amen. Because he did that. Adam was judged in the ground cursed because, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. Abraham is blessed in our text because thou hast done this thing. You offered your son Isaac to me. Abraham's seed would be blessed and bless all nations because thou hast obeyed my voice. Yes. Saul was rejected as king because thou hast not kept what the Lord had commanded thee. The sword did not depart from David's house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Solomon was given an abundance of wealth because he asked not for my, himself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. See, be, I bring out this because. You can do things that will sort of shape what God does God promise Jehu and the children of his fourth that the children of his fourth generation would sit on the throne of Israel because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in my sight? God broke the ships of Jehoshaphat because he joined himself to Ahazi. Ahazi. Jesus says had something against the church of Ephesus because thou hast left thy first love. He had something against the church of Pergamos because thou hast there some that hold to the doctrine of Balaam. Jesus promised the church in Philadelphia he'd keep them from the hour of temptation because thou hast kept the word of my patience. See, our connection with God is a productive connection and there's, there's a lot of becauses. Yes in there that none of them offset God's purpose. I understand that. But this is a level. It's a, it's a lower level, but it's a level you want to get hold of that you can be blessed or judged because of something you did. Amen. Why not choose a blessing? Yes, amen. <laughs> well, let's, let's state it in apostolic language. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect to persons with God. See, so that's, that's this because. Amen. Then Abraham and Isaac, they returned to the young men. It must have been some occasion. It doesn't actually go into any details, but I can't imagine Abraham and Isaac not saying something about what happened up on that mountain. He might have said something, this is what I told you. Remember I told you I was coming again? Now let me tell you what I went up there to do, just so you'll know. So Abraham returned to the young men. We don't know how long they were up there. They had to walk a distance to to get there, he had to build an, he had to build an altar and lay wood in the altar on the order in the altar and tie up Isaac and then re remove Isaac from the altar upon hearing the message and untie him. He had to take hold of the ram caught in the thicket, he had to prepare the ram for sacrifice. Abraham took time to reflect upon the occasion, give a name to the place. Then he and Isaac came back down the mountains. I can't imagine that happening in a few minutes. So it tells you something about those young men. Then they went together to Beersheba. And the last verse tells us that Abraham receives a word about his brother, Nahor. 
Now God is called the God of Nahor. So Nahor was apparently a believer. But the reason Nahor is introduced is because of one of his daughters mm -hmm. who's going to play a prominent role in God's working. Mm -hmm. His daughter was Rebekah. Yeah, right. And when Abram sent out his servant, he said, Go to my kinsman. Mm -hmm. Don't be bringing him a Canaanite woman home for a wife. So he's, he's getting you ready for that here, see? Yeah. And uh, that must have been also sweet to hear this, this word. Well, there's, a, it's, there's more in that text, I know, than what I covered, but it's a, it's a sort of a sacred room. Genesis 22 is kind of like a holy of holies. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> you want to spend some time in there and kind of gather up all the jewels. There's honey laying all around. <laughs> Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Yes, brother. Nor does it give us any record that Abraham ever told Sarah before he left. I don't yes. know if he did or not, but um, but um, either way, she would have had to have been wondering now because yes. they were go off on this journey. Whether he told her he was going to go sacrifice or whether he disclosed the whole thing, we haven't been told about it. That's right. But um, nevertheless, she's doing without Abraham and her son all this time. That's right. And see that this Holy Spirit doesn't bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I was thinking too that faith only reveals what it knows. I mean, it may see some things ahead, but it only speaks out about the things. Yeah, that, like knows, Abraham yeah. told the two men to wait here, and we're going to yeah. go worship. Well, then, like you said, he I'm um, surely he came back and yeah. told them so about it afterwards. Yeah. 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 Amen. But he waited to see what what how it was. Gonna, he believed how that God yeah, was going right. to work it out, but he was waiting to see Amen. how God worked yeah. it out before he spoke mm -hmm. about it. Spoke insightfully. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. Mm. <clears throat> yes, Brother Mike. Appreciate the precision in the way God works things out, mm -hmm. right down to what was said by Abraham, what mm -hmm. was said by Isaac, and what was not said. Yeah, what was not said. Isaac submitting himself to be bound mm -hmm. without a word, and all these things, how that. And they're they're very precise pictures of what was yet to come. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I was thinking about what uh, the thought that you kind of started out with about uh, our testing and trials in this life. It's not worthy to be compared yeah. with the glory that mm -hmm. will be revealed to us. That's you can right. see that in this that Abraham goes through up up to this point and beyond this. It's it's nothing compared to what the yeah. the promises that God made to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We can say we're we're not say we come again and say we're gonna go. Yes, amen. <laughs> it's pretty obvious when you uh, delivered the, the lesson that um, God had never intended yeah. to use Isaac anyway. He That's wasn't right. provide himself That's right. uh, his the own his own sacrifice, but see now uh, Abraham didn't know all of this. See, that would have robbed him of glory if he'd have divulged that. He wouldn't have got as much glory as he did by not divulging it. Oh, no. He got something he'd already, he, he right. wanted to provide yeah. his own sacrifice. Amen. There's another thing, this, you mentioned this about this the because factor. You see, there's a sense in which God, through the proof or the testing, trying of Abraham's faith, he made him worthy of this yeah, promise. Amen. Yeah, they shall walk with me in white, Amen. for they are Amen. worthy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a great demonstration of faith and sound reasoning. Sound reasoning. In Romans Amen. four, he said that he considered him faithful that had promised. Mm -hmm. If Abraham hadn't been given the promise that the seed would be called through Isaac, he wouldn't have been able to do this. No. Mm -hmm. No. That's, no, where, that's, that's right. right. That's where yeah. faith. That's right. Getting hold of the promise enabled him to go up the mountain. Yeah. And we will come down again. Amen. Amen. And so it, it's a it's a great exhortation to all mm -hmm. of us to consider carefully the promises of That's God. Right. This, your heart and mind will be kept through that. This is why the promises must be preached and declared. Amen. Because it helps it helps clear up yeah. reasoning.
Yes, but the Jesus. This issue is confusing, currently confusing issue about worship. This is a wonderful object lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another truth. Worship is an offering of yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Abraham offered himself and all yeah. that effort and all yeah, that travel yeah. and all that time. At the age of whatever. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's all right. that work and yeah. service to God. Isaac offered himself, yielded himself to, to God through his father. That's what worship is. That's right. Mm -hmm. it's there it is, all up. lived out, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's marvelous. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The wood carrying the wood. Carrying the wood up yes. the up a mountain. Yeah. 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 And it you tell you, you think yeah. about that, it, it requires quite a bit of wood. I don't know yeah. if you've ever toted any firewood lately. <laughs> but uh, that's a job. That's right. And it takes quite a bit of wood yes. to burn it to burn oh, a body. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Wood, yes. yeah, it wasn't just a little arm load. Oh. No. Yeah. And if you ever looked at the well, which we have the service of the tabernacle, that was a lot of work. Oh, yeah. And that was called worship. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was very laborious. Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, I never, you were talking about this, how much work involved and stuff. I never thought about this because whenever, uh, I guess when I was little, there was, um, I had these Bible books that it's had like a little uh, thing of sticks that he was carrying with him. <laughs> this little bundle, little bundle yeah. of sticks. But you know, that, that didn't make any sense. This no. <laughs> laid it in order. When that yeah. he said he laid it in order. So why would we think that we would not have a lot of um, labor and preparation That's in preparing right. ourselves That's as a living right. sacrifice Amen. Yeah. to God. Amen. Yeah. Yep. There's also a mercy here, you know, some of the some of the other um, people of that time would have Get, they would have burned him alive. But see, he was going to kill him first. That's right. Out of yeah. mercy. That's right. He was, he, that's, that's what a, a sacrifice yeah. is the letting of blood. That's yeah. what it means, yeah. yeah. But he, he's offering him for an offering, he said. Yeah. But he prepared a sacrifice. Yeah, that's right. That's the kind of what you what you sacrifice to God, you got to let the, the blood out of it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. <laughs> the thing that makes it live, you got to. Let it bleed out. <laughs> Blood. That's right. That's a good thing to see. Yeah, Brother Robert just brought it out again, but it's good to see it this way. And, it, and, it's, it, and, and this whole incident just kind of mm -hmm. makes a picture of it. But now God is making him worthy yeah, that's because right. yeah. that's right. he's, he's worked mm -hmm. it out of him. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he's demonstrated. He just didn't say you were worthy. He, he actually made him worthy. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that even angels couldn't find a, that's right. couldn't find a flaw here. Son carried his own wood. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> he carried his wood too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this record of our father Abraham. And we acknowledge to you that we covet to have this kind of faith that is very obvious, responds very quickly is thorough in obeying you, ready to give thanks, ready to sanctify places where we made progress. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for calling us into your fellowship and the fellowship of the Son and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.